Hi, boys and girls. Um, we're going to be listening to the next lesson, um, our next read aloud chapter, and it's called Warm or Cold Blooded. Now, remember in the previous lesson, we learned about vertebrates and invertebrates. Think about what you remember about what a vertebrate is and an invertebrate. Now, I have this poster that I can get a copy for you. It's called, All My Best Friends Represent Vertebrates. This is a fun and easy way to remember the names of the five animal groups that Rattenborough's good friends belong to. Here's how you can remember it. A stands for amphibians. M in my stands for mammals. B in best stands for birds. F in friends stands for fish. R in represent uh, stands for reptiles. And then finally, the V you can see are vertebrae or verte the vertebrates that all of these animals, um, uh, the group that all these animals belong to. Kind of cool, huh? I'm going to have you play a game. This game is called Guess the Main Idea. I'm going to read you some main ideas and see if you can guess. I'm sorry, I'm going to read you some supporting details and see if you can guess the main idea. Here I go. Before we start, remember a main idea is what the text is mostly about. And if you want to find clues, or if you need clues to finding the main idea, you can ask yourself, what is this text mostly about? You can look at the title or pictures and captions. You can check the first and last sentence. And notice what words are repeated. That often gives you clues. If you have to look for supporting details, where those are the facts that tell you more about the main idea or details. So here's our game. Guess the main idea. I am a vertebrate. I swim in fresh water and salt water. I move around using my fins and breathe oxygen through my gills underwater. Hmm. What's the main idea of this paragraph? Let's try this one. I am an invertebrate. I have a red shell and black spots. I sometimes find my way into your house. Hmm. What's the main idea here? Last one. I am a vertebrate. I slither along the ground and climb up trees. I have a pair of ribs attached to my vertebra. Hmm. What's the main idea? Remember that the clues given, all of these supporting ideas, are about that main idea for this page. Okay, now I want you to listen to the read aloud and determine the main ideas in the read aloud. And you'll also need to take out this activity page from your green folder. Notice these red arrows here. You're going to be filling in as you listen whether an animal group is cold-blooded or warm-blooded. And we'll talk more about what that means during our read aloud. Boys and girls, I have brought along my slideshow once again. Today, we're going to look at slides of my friends some of whom are cold-blooded animals and some of whom are warm-blooded animals. By the sound of it, you would think that warm-blooded animals have warm blood and cold-blooded animals have cold blood, but that is just not the case. The body temperature of a cold-blooded animal changes according to its surroundings or environment that, of that animal, whereas a warm-blooded animal maintains the same temperature all of the time. I heard that you're keeping a foldable to sort or classify animals into groups. What a great idea! You are practicing taxonomy, the study of classifying organisms, exactly like taxonomists do. You're going to be learning how to sort animals in lots of different ways. Today, we're going to sort these five vertebrate groups into two smaller groups. By discovering some common characteristics, you'll learn how to tell which animals are cold-blooded and which animals are warm-blooded. Now, I'd like to help you understand a little more about cold-blooded animals. 
Paolo Piranha lives in the country of Colombia on the continent of South America. He's a fish. His body temperature, the measure of how warm his body is on the inside, changes with his surroundings. Right now his temperature is the same as the water in which he is swimming. When you go swimming, chances are the water is colder than your body temperature. Paolo does not even feel cold in the water because there's no difference between his temperature and the water temperature where he lives. Have you ever used a thermometer? Perhaps when you're sick, your parents or a nurse might measure your temperature with a thermometer. When warm-blooded people get ill, their temperatures often rise or go up. A person's normal body temperature is about 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, and it remains constant, or about the same, most of the time. That's very different from Paolo. The way in which an animal's body temperature is controlled determines whether it's a cold-blooded or warm-blooded animal. My friend Paulo told me that his internal or inside body temperature is never constant. It does not stay the same. He cannot heat his body from the inside like you, so his temperature must change with his surroundings in order for his body to work properly. He becomes hot when it is hot around him and cold when it is cold around him. Okay, boys and girls, during the next part of this read aloud, I want you to listen for the main idea. Here it comes. So you see, although you and Paolo are both vertebrates, you also have differences. One of you is cold-blooded and one of you is warm-blooded. You're right. You are the warm-blooded one, so that makes Paolo... Yeah, the cold-blooded one. Most fish are cold-blooded. In fact, most animals on Earth are cold-blooded. Two of my other friends are cold-blooded as well. Does anyone know who else among them is cold-blooded? Hmm. Well, next I'd like to tell you a little bit about Anna Anaconda. Okay, boys and girls, in that last paragraph... The main idea was that vertebrates are warm and cold-blooded. That's what the paragraph is mostly about. Like Paolo, Anna lives in the rainforest of South America, but in the country of Peru. Does anyone remember what group of animals Anna belongs to? That's right! Anna Anaconda is classified as a reptile, and she shares some of Paolo's characteristics. They're both cold-blooded, but that does not mean that they don't enjoy being warm. Anna loves the heat. Her body is very long indeed, and she told me that one of her favorite things to do is to bask in the sun. The sun helps her stay warm, and her body soaks up the heat from the warm ground as well. Because she can't control her own body temperature, Anna depends upon the sun and her warm surroundings to keep proper warm, properly warm. In fact, my other cold-blooded friend, Tabitha Toad, likes the sun too. Frogs and toads share some of the same characteristics as fish and reptiles. They use their surroundings to maintain or keep constant the proper body temperature. Yes, indeed, Tabitha Toad is cold-blooded, just like Paolo and Anna. And like Paolo and Anna, Tabitha is very comfortable around water. She comes from the Amazon rainforest in the country of Brazil. But just because her home is near the largest river in the world, it doesn't mean she lives in water all the time. Tabitha and all toads are actually more comfortable on land, whereas frogs prefer to be wet. Tabitha is an amphibian, which means that she can live both in and out of the water. Okay, boys and girls, during the next part of the read aloud, listen for the main idea. Here it comes. So there you have it. Fish, reptile, amphibian, three groups of cold-blooded creatures. Their body temperatures change depending upon where they are, becoming warm, 
when their surroundings are warm and cold when it's cold around them. Because they do not have a constant body temperature, they can easily become too hot or too cold. They have developed characteristics and behaviors so that they can live in certain habitats. Okay, boys and girls, do you remember the main idea that I just talked about in that paragraph? Fish, reptiles, and amphibians are all cold-blooded. Okay, you're going to pause the video, take out your activity page 3.2, and mark on your foldable that fish, reptiles, and amphibians are cold-blooded. And then press play on the video to uh, continue on with the story. Let's learn a little bit about two of my other friends. My warm-blooded friend, friends, a bird, Ebenezer Egret, and a fellow mammal, Hilda Hippo. Mammals and birds produce their own body heat internally, which keeps their body temperature one same on the same degree all the time. One thing's for sure, Ebenezer Egret does not put on a winter coat like you do when it's cold outside. Of course, he doesn't need to put on any extra coat because he already has a brilliant coat of feathers. Feathers help keep Ebenezer warm. Want to know an interesting fact that Ebenezer shared with me while I was visiting South Africa? Egret's beautiful white feathers were once prized by hat makers who used them for the sake of women's hat fashion and beauty, not warmth. Imagine that! Birds that live in cold climates sometimes travel south for the winter to make it easier to stay warm and find more available food. Often, physical characteristics help an animal stay warm. Ebenezer wears a coat of feathers, and I wear a coat of fur. Are you wondering what Hilda Hippo uses for a little additional warmth because she doesn't have fur? Let's take a look and see. I have a bit of news for you. In the hot tropical climates of Africa where Hilda Hippo lives, trying to stay cool is a, is a most com more common occurrence than trying to stay warm. Hilda's body design is perfect for helping her stay cool. She has a nice layer of blubber that insulates her and helps her float. Hippopotami spend lots of time in the water of lakes and rivers to escape the heat. Can you see any other characteristics of the hippopotamus that help it stay in the water for long periods of time? Wow, good observations! You notice how having its nostrils, eyes, and ears on the top of its head lets the hippopotamus keep most of its body under water where it can stay cool. Ebenezer also uses water to stay cool. Even though egrets can't swim, they do spend lots of time wading in the water, mostly to get their dinner. They feast on fish and toads and plenty of insects in order to store up the energy needed to keep their body temperature constant. Well, everybody, our time is up for today. You've learned a lot about the taxonomy of cold-blooded and warm-blooded animals, so now you can fill in your foldable. I can't wait to see you again and continue with the show. Bye for now!